And that's where 99% of folks who do this fail. It is almost fall and it's gonna be time for the cool season folks. That's if you have perennial ryegrass, turf type tall fescue, Kentucky bluegrass lawns. It's time to start doing our fall core aeration and overseeding. We're gonna be fixing things like disease damage, weeds, all that stuff in one video, keeping it super simple, no funny business, so stay tuned. So we're breaking things down into seven very simple steps here. First, you're gonna mow the lawn and you're gonna mow a little bit lower than you're used to. If you need to, a couple weeks in advance, start lowering your height of cut. We're gonna collect all of those clippings and then next, what we're gonna do is dethatch. We're trying to get great seed to soil contact. So a machine like this is going to do a good job of breaking through all that thatch, picking it up and getting it off the soil. Once you dethatch, it's nice to come back with the mower and suck all that stuff up. Then we're waiting for the machine, but the core aeration machine, that is gonna be the next step. Poke as many holes as possible in the soil to really encourage that oxygen to the root zone of the plants. Core aeration is probably the key and the most critical component of this process. After that, we're gonna start preparing for seed. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the entire lawn with a product called Tenacity. That's gonna do two things for us. One, it's going to kill the existing weeds that are here. And two, it's gonna act as a pre-emergent preventing new weed seeds from germinating. However, tenacity does allow the seed that you're gonna be putting down, that cool season turf seed, to grow. So tenacity is another crucial tool as part of this process. Then we're ready to throw down our seed and our fertilizer. We have here our perennial ryegrass. This is five iron from United Seeds. We're gonna be putting this down probably around like that three to five pounds per thousand square feet rate. A uh, little bit on the heavy side. Uh, you'll, you might think, all right, seed is very expensive, but all the hard work and effort that we're gonna be putting into this, I do like going down just a little bit heavier, especially in some of these areas that are pretty much bare. So, uh, you know, buy enough seed, one, to do your overseeding, but then two, if you have bare areas and are concerned with washout, Make sure you have enough to go back and make some repairs later on if you get a gully washer of a storm event and things wash out. After we put our seed down, we are then gonna put down a starter fertilizer. Interested to know what your thoughts are on this because it seems to be a topic of discussion. A lot of people say, hey, do not put the starter fertilizer down yet. Your existing grass is gonna grow too vigorously and it's gonna prevent the new seeds from germinating and growing. I've never had an issue with that. I'm of the mindset of just do everything, put it all down at once and let, you know, just set it and forget it kind of thing. Never have to follow up again. So uh, I've been totally successful with that. Think you will be too. But let us know what you guys think in the comments, especially if you have experience doing this stuff because a lot of people actually learn from those comments. Then kind of like a bonus thing, you don't really have to do this, but if you're struggling with that seed to soil contact, uh, you can put down a layer of either compost or peat moss. Here we have the Lansy compost and peat moss spreader. We'll be putting down a layer of peat moss really to encourage that seed to soil contact. It helps retain moisture. Uh, peat moss retains almost like 10 times its weight in water. It's a good visual indicator of when the soil is dry and needs to be watered because when you have these new seeds on the ground, you really should keep them moist through that germination process. So I love using peat moss for those reasons. I've never had an issue using peat moss. Um, so we'll be using that today. And then the very last thing, this will not work if you don't do this, you need to water. We do have an irrigation system in the ground here from Irrigreen, and we will have it set to water on a regular schedule, keeping things moist throughout the entire process here. Uh, that's really important. You can even set up uh, your own little DIY uh, sprinkler setup with hose. Whatever you need to do, you must get 
water on this. You can't just rely on Mother Nature to keep things wet for you. Uh, you will likely fail if you do that. So make sure you have a plan in place to keep things watered. You don't have to keep it soaked, but keep it moist. Uh, try your best to prevent it from drying out, at least through that germination process. Once things start to germinate and start to establish, then you can start backing down on your watering, but you absolutely, this will not work if you don't do this, you need to water and that's where 99% of folks who do this fail. And there you have it. In just a few short weeks, this lawn is gonna be completely transformed. We've got a little bit of cleaning up to do. It is a lot of hard work. You are gonna get messy, especially if you're gonna mess around with that peat moss, but it is totally worth it. You can do this in a day. We did do it in two days here, just with the timing of getting the rental for the aerator but you can certainly do this all in one day. Keep following along because in a few weeks we will show you the results here. I do like to give you this information in as real time as possible. So keep following along. We will definitely be showing you those results, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.